Hello and welcome to more Dakar Cube. Uh, this, this pack's actually pretty interesting. We have Fevered Visions, which is a card I really want to try, but I don't think it's worth first picking. And, like, first of all, I don't think this effect is good enough to first pick because it's only good in a small subset of decks. And second of all, it is double colored, but it looks so much fun. It's a card I would be really happy, like, fifth picking. Um, I think probably what I'm just going to pick up is Smuggler's Copter. It's good in just about every deck in this cube because... You have Graveyard Matters, you have aggro decks. Um, it's just like, you know, it loots and it hits really hard. So it just kind of does everything you want to do. And it's colorless. So you can put it in green, you can put it in black, red sacrifice. You can put it in like blue tempo. It's just like the perfect card. So we're going to take the Copter and just keep in mind that Fever Visions is in there. Also things like Shriek Mar are quite good. But starting with a colorless card always feels good. Uh-oh. There's our birthing pod. <laughs> um, I... You probably saw the video already where I tried to force Birthing Pod. It's a fun card. I don't think it's like absurd, especially in this cube where it seems like being aggressive is quite a bit better than trying to get a lot of value. I still might take it though. That being said, there's History of Benalia, Arid Mesa, Henward Garrison actually hits really hard, and then some good black cards too. I think I might be responsible and just take this good Garrison, although maybe I take Arid Mesa and stay open. I'm just gonna take Pod, who am I kidding? Birthing Pod, I can take like green cards, go that route, or I can get Bramble Sovereign Birthing Pod. Whoa, hold up. That sounds kind of sweet. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, I can pay two and make a copy. And then I can pod away the copies. Um, Misty Rainforest would be the next pickup. I also love Black Breeds. She's very, very good, but let's see what we can do. <laughs> Somehow I talked myself out of drafting a good deck. Again, I don't recommend trying this. Uh, the winning strategies in this cube seem to be aggro. So if you had just taken the red creature, um, and then there was good red cards there, and you take something like Embercleave, which is just unbeatable, you'd have a much better deck than what I might end up with. But we're going to try and have fun. I want to Bramble Sovereign some stuff, if possible. I'm not going to force it. Um, there it is. Not a whole lot. I could take the Carpluse and Forest. And just try and stay open. Course of Portal is fine, but we're trying to be aggressive. Like, you can't just dirtle around with Birthing Pod. Um, I could just take some random creatures because you do need, like, a critical mass of creatures to, like, pod them out. But I think I'm just going to take the fixing for now and see where we go. Um, if green doesn't seem too open in the next couple packs, we can always transition as well. Ooh, Massacre Girl is a very good Birthing Pod target. Sin Prodder is very nice. Overgrown Tomb I like, Playcrafter, Murmuring Mystic would be good if we get the um, Fevered Visions to come around, but I think for this we're going to take Massacre Girl. She's a very good answer to a lot of the strategies in this format, and she keeps herself alive, so each other creature dies, which makes sense. Okay, we got niv -Mizzet, the big boy. Storm's Wrath is a board wipe, which is pretty necessary in this cube. There's Blood Crypt, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. I might just take this Blood Crypt, although red does seem open. I should have just taken red from the beginning. I, I messed up with this Birthing Pod meme. Um, we would have had a really nice deck. But I'm going to take the fixing and see what happens. Okay. Um, there's a Whip of Erebos. That's actually pretty nice in this format because like, your life total is like, very relevant. So... Comboing that with Birthing Pod and Bramble Sovereign gives us a way to uh, like pod into creatures, then whip creatures. Actually, this could be kind of sweet. Okay, I'm on board with this now. We have Priest of Forgotten Gods, which is also a good combo with Whip of Erebus. That's an option. We have Glint Sleeve Siphoner or Leovold. Um, there is some Leovold combos in here, and he we can also get him off of Birthing Pod. But I think I like the Priest Whip synergy, so I'm just going to take that. And I really do like the Sacrifice deck, and if we can get something like Massacre Girl plus the guy who does one damage whenever something dies, that would be a nice thing to have happen. And maybe Bramble Sovereign is just something we keep in the pod, because getting two Priests or something like that would be good too. Mm, the Fevered Visions did come around, but I think we're looking at Shriek Maw for this deck. What does the Chandra do? XL the top card, you can play it this turn. XL the top seven, you can play them. And whenever she takes damage, she does damage to opponents or planeswalkers. I think I just want Shriek Maw. It's so good with like Birthing Pod, Whip, and all that. What the heck? <laughs> Interesting. All the cards that I thought were going to be taken 
literally these were all the good cards i thought were in the pack and they all came around i'm looking at carrion feeder because it's good with priest but i also do really like handwear garrison i think carrion feeders like the sacrifice out sacrifice outlets are very important i'm gonna put this over here right now we're looking to be mostly black and the deck looks cool so far and black seems open like nobody took black or red card so maybe we give up green and we just go black red and you could still run birthing pot in just a black red deck yeah okay black braids get in the deck uh magmatic sinkhole is also quite tempting and this is discard a card discard x cards damage equal to the total cmc of each of up to x target creatures that also seems very good but we're just gonna take black braids and hope to find some good things to sacrifice like token enablers and stuff like that i am not sure about birthing pod we'll see what happens there oh we get a gurmy boy i'll take a gurmag angler this card is very expensive whenever you lose life draw the mini cards yeah that eat mana no <laughs> i'm not gonna pay for that there's plague crafter Mizium tank Whenever you cast a non-creature spell no i think i'm gonna take the craft over smokestack and we need three drops this also helps with our like it synergizes with priest because the more sacrifice outlets you have the better it gets and this also makes birthing pod more of a possibility although it's not something you really want to be splashing just because it's kind of costs a lot of life but you can Ooh, grave crawler that's pretty nice sorry land of war waste i would like to put you in the deck but wow all right well mono black stacks is definitely open so i think we're just gonna do this and this is still over here like we have we have a curve this is really a five drop as far as birthing pot is concerned so it's not impossible for us to put that in the deck i can't imagine lazatep reaver get, getting taken i think that's one of the cards we would like for our deck but metamorph is pretty good too we can use it to copy some of our creatures it's really versatile with whip if we do end up getting birthing pot it's good there the other option is phyrexian arena if we want to i think gray merchant is probably in this cube and so playing this early also helps a lot target creature control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature okay i'm not going to be doing that so i think it's between these two and i'm not sure which one i think maybe arena is a little bit better just because it's proactive and it helps if we get like braids or smallpox yeah i'm gonna take arena because if, if our goal is to kill their stuff um i'd rather have something that does things when they don't have stuff you know uh this pack's actually pretty bad for us there's not much here i could take an isolated chapel there's go for the throat and ransack the lab which are all nice but we're probably gonna want to go white for token producers like tithe taker so i'm gonna take the fixing first and then see if we can get the tokens later on Dreadhorde Invasion is perfect. So good with Black Braids and things like that. So we'll take that Verdant Catacombs, Secure the Wastes, and all that is good. But this card is perfect. It's the, the Poor Man's Bitter Blossom. Here we get Ophiomancer, another good card for this strategy. Colagon's Command and Dread Return. Maybe I take Colagon's Command instead. No, because I don't even know if I'm red. And this card is way too good to pass up. So I'm kind of sad that I passed Smokestacks. I forgot what I took over it. I'm not sure, but this deck is looking really nice. Ooh, Marin. So Marin is every turn you get a creature to your hand. Um, and if enough creatures have died, it just goes straight to the battlefield. Otherwise, we can take Plague Engineer because we don't have any green fixing right now. Um, this would make Birthing Pot a lot better because it's a, like a really nice four drop to hit. Our three drops are okay, but not amazing. Otherwise, we could just take Plague Engineer and be very happy about it because this wins like the mirror match. It does a lot of things. I think I'm just going to take Plague Engineer. There's no re reason to risk it when our deck is already looking this nice. Ooh, Sandworm Convergence. I love that this is in here. I think I'm going to take Thoughtseize, but Chupacabra is also really good with things like Whip. Um, I just don't have any hand disruption yet, so I'm going to take that. And I don't think Chupacabra comes around, but you never know. Epocrisite is also really good in the Sacrifice Outlet. So is Blood Soaked Champion, though. You can play this turn one and like keep attacking and... We have a lot of creatures that just don't die. I really do like Apocrisite though. This card's also insane, right? Three mana, three equip, gives plus two plus O oh, vigilance and makes a knight. And whenever they attack, it makes knight tokens. That seems quite good, but I think we're between these two and I don't know which one to take. This goes from graveyard to the battlefield. That's probably better. It also synergizes with our smuggler's copter and it's kind of nice with priest. Like you can attack then sacrifice it mid combat or like end of combat and bring it back immediately random kozilek um i'll take a goblin bushwhacker just in case we get the red fixing but i doubt it 
if this was a pod draft also what the heck <laughs> i just noticed this pack is all absurd blue white playables if this was a pod draft i would probably take supreme verdict although maybe i take hollowed fountain because i don't there's like no chance of me playing bushwhacker yeah actually i'm gonna take this um there is a chance i get like a blue black fetch and then this can add white or something who knows because when i'm running smallpox I don't know. I, I'm probably not playing this, but I'm probably not playing uh, Bushwhacker either. I don't think I'm playing Birthing Pod, so I kind of sabotaged my draft a little bit at the beginning um, for the sake of the memes. I, I wanted a Birthing Pod deck, but green, I have not seen like any green cards, and I've only seen black cards except for that weird pack which just now that was all blue-white cards. So I think literally everybody is fighting over green here. Um, well, I don't... <laughs> I have no idea what people are taking now. I don't. We're going to take Lazatep Reaver. It's great in this deck. Go for the throat came around. Ransack the lab. <laughs> what are people taking? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I like this more than Ransack. Because we don't have that much removal. And this card's fine. Basically, we're just trying to set it up so we get braids. Whip helps us win the mirrored match. Or deal with all the red decks. And whipping back things like Shriekmaw and Massacre Girl seems sweet. Also, this is only pack two. So... I think we've transitioned quite well to have a nice deck. Uh, do I want a Wishclaw Talisman? I think I'm just going to take the Iguanar. We actually have a lot of sacrifice, so this is a potential splash that is pretty impactful, whereas this card's fine. It can tutor up something like Braids, but then they can tutor up lands. So I'm just going to take the Iguanar. If I get like another Blood Crypt or a Fetch, I'm going to be pretty happy that I took it. Ooh, Dread Return. That seems actually kind of good here. Windfall is also kind of cute if we had gotten Leovold. Chandra's absurd, but not for this deck. The card is certainly playable. Wow. Marin and Rotting Regisaur. This card's very good if we end up green, but green is not felt that open. So I'll just take Reggie because he hits very hard. And Thought Erasure, Ink Eyes. Um, I mean, it's not impossible that I end up playing this card because it is a 5-4 that can regenerate. And if you've been like smallpoxing them, you can get their creatures back. So this card can win the game on its own. The problem is it costs 5 mana to do so. And it's only good in the late game. The, wow. What the heck is going on with this pack? I have no idea. Last pick Stagger Shock after all that red went around game 1. Or the first round. This is one of the weirdest drafts I've ever seen. Because I've never seen like one color be as open as this. But then all the other colors seem open too. <laughs> like, are people just not taking cards? Ooh, man. There's a lot of cards that would be really good for this deck here. Grey Merchant seems like the one I should probably take. We have the whip, so like we can rebuy this. We also have Dread Return Grey Merchant. So if I pass this and someone just happened to pick it up, I would never forgive myself. If I was in need of a lot of cards, Eldest Reborn is pretty good. Judith is unbelievably good. One damage to any target. Yeah, that's good. Falcon Wrath Aristocrat is nice, and Goblin Bombardment would be good too, but... I'm going to take Grey Merchant because I think we're probably going to be mono black just because I don't have the fixing. Although there's a Dragon Skull Summit. Oh, Scrap Heap Scrounger though. I think I can just stay mono black. There's not really a huge reason to go red and this card is very good. I might even wheel Wretched Confluence. Um, yeah, we'll just take this. So yeah, we could take Judith, but like our mana is perfect. We have a 23 card playable deck right now. Rankle is really good here. Ooh. Order of Midnight, what do you do? Return a creature and then you get a 2 mana 2-2 two, two flyer. I like that. But Rankle... Rankle is some good top end. This does let us get back Grey Merchant again. So we could just keep Grey Merchanting. But I'm going to take this card. This card's also very good. Whenever it attacks, discard your hand and then draw 3 cards. I'll take this guy. Uh, Knight's Whisper... Bolus' Citadel. I don't think this is a Citadel deck. I'll take Knight's Whisper. I don't know if I'm playing it. We have a... A good bit of card draw but against controlling decks maybe i can bring this in it's just kind of a liability against decks that attack our life total because we we really only have whip of erebos this is a two drop i think i need a bit more token producers and i don't know if i love rotting regisaur i want to put this over here i think i do like dread return because we have gray merchant but maybe it's a bit win more so we could do something like this and then, yeah, maybe I do that. I cut Reggie, or cut Dread Return, at least for now, for Knight's Whisper. Ooh, Gutter Bones I like. Rexine Reclamation I like. 
and giant killer is pretty good but i think we need gutter bones we can get a creature back yeah reclamation pay two life get a creature back i mean that's just better than dread return i think but i'm gonna take this guy and hope to wield the gutter bones that might be a bit greedy but mardu skull hunter oh yes if you attack they discard I don't really need ultimate price and I'm just going to commit to mono black here. There's no reason to sabotage my mana. So that's good. That's good. All of these are good. Maybe I don't need massacre girl because I'm going to just be killing all of my own stuff. And 16 land with this build currently seems okay to me because my top end isn't very heavy, but we do want some amount of lands for smallpox and black braids. And then gray merchant is mostly there to win the game. Can I get a pack rat? <laughs> that seems so unlikely, but I'm just trying to think of like what cards could possibly upgrade everything I have here. And it's like pack rat, uh, Phyrexian Obliterator, if that's in the key, would be really nice. Let me think about this. Ooh, Necrotol and Mesmeric Fiend. This is tough. I also, I guess I could have had black rat fixing, but there's no point. Um, I could get a little bit more hand disruption at two mana, but Necrotol is really good. I think I'm just gonna take Necrotol. Stitcher Supplier. I could take Find as a double. Yeah, just get back two creatures. I'm not even gonna cast a flashback, but that's cool. Cause I don't like this is good. It can get back Gutter Bones, Bloodsoak Champion, and Grave Crawler. And Scrap Heap Scrounger. Hang on. So there's like a lot of synergies with Stitcher Supplier, but it is just a one mana one one, whereas this can get back two really important creatures. So I think I'd take this. Okay, <laughs> they all came around. Um, Eldest Reborn is good top end. Judith is good, but we're just going to stay mono black. There's no no reason. They sacrifice a creature, discard a card, we reanimate something. This deck looks really nice. I'm just trying to decide, like, we have so many playables, I don't know what to cut. I'm certainly playing Grey Merchant. Gurmag seems like a no-brainer. Whip seems good. Like, it will help us win late games. I don't know if I like Smallpox. It's probably good, like Sack a Gravecrawler or something. Wretched Confluence? Sure. Order of Midnight? Alright, well, all the cards that I highlighted as good cards come around. Maybe I just evaluate this cube very differently than everyone else, but this is getting weird. I could probably run a 60 card deck again. I'm not going to. We'll save that for the live streams. I like this, I like this, I like all of these. So, I guess we need to decide if we want to be like a top end deck with Wretched Confluence and Necrotol and things like that, or if we want to be a low to the ground aggressive deck with all of these one mana creatures. <laughs> we got a Citadel, sure. And you know, maybe we put in Bullets to Citadel, who knows. I don't think we can afford it because we're going to lose a lot of life. Order of Midnight can't block, but it's a two mana two one flyer. And we got Reclamation. All right, I don't know what to do. There's too many good cards. Guys, help. And we get Nicol Bolas, the true dream. <laughs> All right, I mean, now I truly have too many cards in this deck. And I, I think I'm going to cut Confluence because it costs five. We'll start there. I might cut the Eldest Reborn and then bring it in if I feel like I want to be slower because it's very good. But again, at five mana, it doesn't do a lot in all the matchups. Grey Merchant is obviously staying in. Um, Braids is good on the play. And on, like this card's good. Whip. Rankle, Necrotol, all solid players. All of these cards are very good. Shriekmaw, Copter is absurd. That is good. I could see cutting Smallpox and then just bringing it in against some matchups. Like, it's probably going to be good almost every time here, but I don't know. We'll, we'll leave it on the side for now and just see. Do I want Phyrexian Reclamation? I can bring that in for grindy matchups as well, because we have a good bit of recursion already. Um... I can side in Mesmeric Fiend. I think 15 land is still too few. I need 16 for this deck. So I need to make at least one more cut. Ooh, Evoke is really good with Priest as well. Because you can Evoke and then sack with the Sacrifice trigger on the stack. I'm down for that. I feel like I want to cut one of these fours because it makes my curve a little bit better. But I like all of these cards. Like Rankle having Haste is really nice. Maybe I can get rid of the Skull Hunter. It's fine, but not the best. And then 16 Swamp. I really feel like Smallpox should be in this deck. I could bring it in for Order of Midnight. Getting a creature back. Because most of my creatures already come back. Yeah, maybe I do that. We'll try it. I, I've never really cast Smallpox, so we'll see what happens. Um, things to bring in, I mean, you can see I have like infinite potential cards to bring in. So if you think I sideboarded or built the deck wrong, just let me know 
It's it's hard when you have this many playables, but it feels like this is around where I would settle if I was going to make a deck. See you guys round one. Oh right, we were playing against Ryan Broncos one, and we're on the play. Bad news for the opponent. This hand is slower than I would like, but I'm still going to keep. Because we're on the play, so it's not that bad. And I guess we need to decide, do I lead on Knight's Whisper or Priest of Forgotten Gods? A lot of that depends on what my opponent does. Because right now this creature doesn't do anything. Hmm. Don't you dare thought seize me. Okay, I think I'm going to Knight's Whisper. Uh, I did draw... Yeah, we're just going to draw, open our opportunity. So we're going to go down to 5, drop to 7. There we go. Now we got like Ophiomancer, Priest, and things like that. Uh, okay, they take Ophiomancer here, I imagine. Unless they're really weak to Plague Engineer. But all of this is fueling Gurmag Angler. Yeah, so I, I think I think the pick here is Ophiomancer, unless Plague Engineer naming Zombie just like wipes you out. Because this card, I guess they don't know how good it is, but it's good with Rankle, they can see. It's good with Priest, they can see. Yeah, that's I agree with that pick. Opponent missed a land drop. Well... That's not good for them. Let's go Dreadhorde Invasion into Gutter Bones. Um, I don't want to play Plague Engineer until I know what's going on. I mean, they kept a one lander, so... Okay, they're black-red. Order of Midnight cannot block. You got it. Let's draw a land. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play Rankle here. And cannot block, yeah. So I'm going to sacrifice the army token, because that's fine with me. This trigger onto the stack. So sacrifice is a creature. I don't really want to let them run this because they're like stuck on lands and my hand is pretty good. And I don't want to discard a card because my hand is also pretty good. Um although maybe I discard Plague Engineer and then that helps me play Gurmag Angler earlier. But I think Plague Engineer is gonna be good, so we're just gonna both sacrifice. Okay, they did in fact draw two lands in a row. Woe Strider. It's pretty good. Good, that's a horror and this makes goats. There's another land, so I can rummage that away, but I think I like going Swamp Plague Engineer. Do I just name Goat? I can force them to sacrifice their Woe Strider? Yeah, I guess I just named Goat. Goodbye, Goat. So they're gonna lose that guy, so I don't actually want to offer the trade. I can play Priest. Back with Rankle. Each player sacrifices a creature. I don't want to let them draw into answers until I can do something. So we lose our zombie, that's fine. They lose their wolf strider. Last turn. Um, a board wipe would be a little troublesome, but we can even just like play Gurmag Angler and go from there. We mostly just played Plague Engineer as a 3 mana 2-2 two, two death touch, because it's good. Um, yeah, if, if they wipe the board, we still have this doing stuff. And then we get back Gutter Bones. That's not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't expect anything different. So this is a matchup where my life total probably matters a lot. I don't know if I actually like Thoughtseize because it's just a dead top deck card. This could actually be a pretty nice matchup for something like Ink Eyes, Wretched Confluence, or the Eldest Reborn. I really want to bring in Ink Eyes just so I can say I did it. Oop. <laughs> Got in the deck. You saw nothing. I just think this is going to be a really grindy matchup where... Having this 5-4 regenerate creature could take it over. And I don't I don't like Thoughtseize in matchups like this at all. This hand's good. Hey. There's our Grey Merchant. So, can't block, can't block. It doesn't really matter. I guess I'll play this one, because right now this one's much easier to bring back. Yep, take two. Wow, this is the straight up mirror match. I probably should have cut, like, smallpox, huh? Because my opponent's deck is also set up to handle smallpox. Hit for two. This is a problem. It makes my playcrafter basically worthless. Yeah, I think I'm going to sideboard. I, I messed this up. I, I didn't know they were like exactly the mirror match. So post sideboard, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to change my deck to be way more controlling. I'll take the two. Do I gain life? No. Okay, drawing mono lands is pretty nice. I'm going to attack with the Blood-Soaked Champion. Okay, the other option I have is to play Gravecrawler, but I'm just going to sacrifice the Blood-Soaked Champion, because at least this 3-2 can block, and they have to sacrifice the Lazatep Reaver. doesn't do that much to them, but um, it does limit their options when I start activating Priest later on. 
And next turn I get to Wrangle, which can make me draw a card. Because we just want to set up for a big Grey Merchant. And that can hopefully swing the tide in my favor. Oh no. Goodbye. And that's Sacrifice 2. Yeah, this is bad. We take the hit, I think. Yeah. Fall to 11. 4, 8, 9, 10. So I actually can't even draw a card with Rankle. Not the best situation. Um, I don't think I'm... Let's see, Rankle can hold down the Blood-Soaked Champion. And then I just take 8. If they have a kill spot, I lose anyway. So the question is, do I want to hit them? I think I'm just going to keep Rankle back. I don't know. That could be very wrong. But I, th I feel like attacking them... I put them to 10, and then what? They attack me for a bunch, I chump block and die. This way I get to keep Priest around and play a Grey Merchant. Ugh. Yeah. Yep. Their draw was like mine, but just way better. Goodbye, Priest. And now I take 8, so keeping back Rankle didn't do anything. And they even get to get back their Blood Soak Champion post-combat. Holy cow. Yep. So let's see. If I had hit them, right, they would be at 10. Uh, does that do anything? I can name Human on Plague Engineer. Maybe that does something. That kills that, that makes this a 2-1. And then I have Death Touch to block the zombie army. Let me, let me think about this. So if I put them to 10, I could put them down to 6. I could put them down to 1 life. Wait, if I'd attacked the Rankle, I think I could have killed them. Let me think about this. So they'd be at 10. Then I attack now, we both draw and lose. So they go down to 6. Then I play Grey Merchant, hit them for 4, they go to 2, then they go to 1 on their upkeep, so that would not be lethal. I think I want to go Plague Engineer, name Human. We need them to have nothing in hand for this to work, but name Human. We're going to trade Plague Engineer for the Zombie Army. Um, I can play Gravecrawler. I can attack with Rankle and make them sacrifice their Gravecrawler, but then I just die, right? Yeah, this is going to suck because I have to lose everything because this can't block. So I attack, they sacrifice this, and then they swing with both of these. So I actually have to trade here and here and take two and go to one. Yeah, it's not looking good for us. However, if they are not feeling super aggressive and they pass turn and I can Grey Merchant, then the game kind of ends. But I don't think they would do that. Yeah, this attack is way too good for them. Block, block. Take two, go to one life. So I'm going to gain three and go up to four. Oh yeah, they get that guy back too. And they have more? Oh no. And I draw land. Yeah, well, we'll play this pre-combat. Hit them for two. They can't do anything else. Oh, I'm just dead on board, aren't I? They just attack with both guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, game three, game three. Very involved matchup. So, Smallpox seems absolutely terrible. Um, I'm actually not a big fan of Plague Crafter either. Necrotol is also quite bad. Shriek Maw is non-black creature. They have some. Let's see what else we can do, though. Uh, we can bring in... I don't really like Massacre Girl, because I'm going to be on the play. Order of Midnight seems fine. I'm not, I'm not upset about that. Running Reggie does attack through them pretty well and I empty my hand okay. So if I do want to keep this like low to the ground aggressive strategy, Reggie might be worth it. Um, target player draws a card, loses one life, target creature gets minus two, minus two, or bring back three creatures. I think I'm gonna bring back this because we're just gonna have a lot of trading. And then maybe I do just keep Plague Crafter because we can keep them off of their creature if I'm on the play. It's just so bad when they have all their one drops, right? But if I'm on the play, I can play that so they can't block. It's probably fine. It's also good with whip. Do I want the Eldest Reborn? They sacrifice a creature, discard a card, and then I get something back. That might be just better than Ink Eyes. Hmm. I could also cut Ink Eyes for Reggie. Maybe that makes more sense. It's just so expensive. I tried it. I had Ink Eyes in my deck for one game. <laughs> That's all I can order. Let's go first. Yeah, I'll keep this. Go for the throat will probably be pretty nice. Shriek Maw is awkward, so we just gotta hope they have some red creature I can kill. Maybe I should have just gotten rid of this. It's kind of bad. They mulliganed, which is also quite good. I'm gonna lead on Gutter Bones because it just hits harder. And they don't have a one drop, that's great. This is only if an opponent lost life. Okay, land there was good. Attack for two. 
like carrion feeder. So I think in the dark, Plague Engineer is going to name Warrior because Gutter Bones is a warrior and there are other warriors. Um, but Zombie is also pretty important if they have... Okay, well, we're naming Zombie. <laughs> that, it's not even a question anymore. Ooh, if I draw a land, we're in business. I didn't even remember Blade Braith was still in my deck. I think it's quite bad in general, but this accident might help me. They don't have a way to kill my Plague Engineer. So they played a two-man enchantment that makes them lose one life every turn currently. Don't kill Plague Engineer. Okay, they don't have an instant speed removal. It's a good blocker. That's a good card. Um, I think I just want to get this down now. Although, I guess I can attack with Gutter Bones first. Oh, this can block. Hmm, what do I want to do? I think I want to just play Dreadhorde Invasion. I'm not that worried about Woe Strider. And in that case, I can attack with Gutter Bones. Yeah, I think I want to be the aggressive one here. Because they probably just take it or chump with the Goat and Scry. Yeah, this is just free damage. Now I can play this. The straight up mirror, but I have better mana, although they've hit their mana every turn. They might be able to Flame Tongue Kabu Plague Engineer now, but at least I can Shriek Maw that. Yeah. Oh, whoa. I want to sacrifice this. Sacrifice you. So they're at 11. They hit me for 3. I draw a land. Make a zombie. Land. Ugh. Um, I think I need to Shriek Maw this. So we're going to Shriek Maw, kill the Flame Tongue Kavu, and we get to sacrifice it in response. Um, right, sacrifice here, make this bigger, hit them for a lot of damage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One, two, three, four, five. I can hit them for six and put them to five life. That's pretty tempting. Um, but the problem is if I do that and they kill my Carrion Feeder, then I'm in trouble. I hit them for 6, put them to 5 life, so they have 5 turns to kill me. That seems worth it. If they have double Edict, so be it. They're at 4 now. Okay. It's a race. Take 7. Sacrifice a creature. If it was a human, put a counter on him. Alright, well, I'm definitely attacking with a Carrion Feeder. Oh, where's my land? Oh, that will be game winning when it happens. Actual game winning. Um, so, one, two, three, four. I can go for the throat, the woe strider, and force a double chump. That's an option. Or I can just attack with carrion feeder, but that's just gonna trade for their zombie army, which I don't like. If the game goes long, I draw any land, I just win immediately when I play Whip of Erebos. So I think wait, like making the game take longer is probably better. So let's just attack with my carrion feeder because it can't block anyway only if an opponent lost life so i guess i could attack like this and then bring back gutter bones but that's only if they take damage so if they block block then i can't bring it back so i think i just attack here because i really want to cast go for the throat i think it's a little weird they block with the goat let's see how they scribe puts one card on the bottom that's good yeah any land and we just win so We'll play to that. I can go for the throat at instant speed, kill their Woe Strider, or their zombie army if I need to. They go to three. I'm going to take four at the very least. Okay, their zombie army gets bigger. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, okay, so they can stop me from blocking. Their deck's so good. How much damage can they do to my face? So they hit me for four. They can sacrifice this and this to kill my two blockers. She's so good. Um, let's let them make a mistake. I don't think I can kill anything in response here. That was an insane, insane draws from my opponent every step of the way. If they let me block, I think I have a very good chance of winning. Oh, they let me block. Perfect. Um, and now I just need to not die, right? So whenever something they control dies, she does one damage. So I can block here and here. I'm going to take five. And I think at this point... I need to go for the throat, the Judith. Then I win with a removal spell as well. Yeah, let's kill. Well, let's... Whenever a creature you control dies. So let's kill Judith. Make them decide what's happening before I let them know if I'm sacrificing my creatures or not. They go face. That makes sense. This gets indestructible, which is scary. That fizzles. Um, I'm going to sacrifice this, obviously. 
And then these trade, I think that's fine. I don't need a 6 6 really, right? This is exile four cards. Yeah, so that's not really happening. And I die next turn, so I need whip this turn or removal spell. Come on, deck. Land. Ugh, that sucks. Turn seven, no land. Yep, I attack with the carrion feeder and I just die in the air. I can't believe I lost that game. Opponent's at two. The the uh, the flyer is what did it. I didn't have a way to deal with it. But if I'd gained five there, I'd be at nine. Yeah, no, now I just die. Man, deck was so good too. I mean, I'm gonna keep playing, but it's just I really thought I was gonna trophy with this one. The top card's gonna be land. Rankle. We were a ways away from casting whip. Whew. See you guys next round. Um, yeah, I'll keep this hand. It's not the best hand in the world, but. We do get to curve Phyrexian Arena into Grey Merchant, and being on the draw, uh, you know, there's a lot of one drops we can run into, and it's hard to mulligan something with this many. Basically, Phyrexian Arena. This card's so good. Opponent mulligan to six. They're playing green. Cra oh no. That's going to be problematic. Fortunately, it's in enough turns that hopefully we can prepare for it, and we have Plague Engineer to name Rhino if we need to. Although, I don't know if making them 3 3 versus 4 4 is that good. Um, Probably Plague Engineer will name Elf. No, we're going to be a turn too late. We're just drawing land. Um, I'll offer the trade. There's no way they take it. Yeah, I think this turn, this hand was a little bit too slow. They level up like there's no reason not to. And now it's a 1-2. Man, if it just didn't become a 1-2, that would be so nice. They're not even casting anything? Oh, boy. Well, can I draw a kill spell? Okay. I think it's worth Shriek mawing this. They're limited on mana, so I can do this. Um, I know I have a lot of other good 3-mana plays, but... We kill this, then we Plague Engineer any other else they have. Back you, because it's going to die anyway. Look at that synergy. Hit them for 2. Um, I'm getting worried about the Rhinos, though. And they draw a land, and it's Brontodon, which can kill my Phyrexian Arena. Many things wrong here. Gutter Bones. Hmm. Let's go Swamp. Rexine Arena, Gutter Bones. These don't have haste, right? Yeah, the tokens don't have haste. Normally when you play a suspend card, it gives the creature itself haste, but because this is making creature tokens, as far as I'm aware, the creature tokens don't have haste. Yeah, okay, they do not have haste. So they can trade Brontodon for Arena if they want to, which I don't like that they have the option, but probably they won't because their best bet here is just killing me before I can do anything. On a Shaman. All right, Grave Crawler. I want some good black pips so that I can play stuff before Grey Merchant. So I don't know, something like Rankle could be good. Wow, ask and you shall receive. Um, I can play Rankle. I can also make Carrion Feeder absolutely enormous, but I think we're just gonna go with Rankle, discard Grave Crawler, like make each player discard. I'm gonna take one, two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'm gonna take a lot of damage here. I can chump block with Gutter Bones, but that's cool. I guess I'm also going to make each player sacrifice a creature. I guess I could just sacrifice Gutter Bones. Because that's just better than chumping with him. Because this is a zombie. Trigger on the stack. Each player discards a card and sacrifices a creature. Goodbye Gravecrawler. Goodbye Gutter Bones. And I cast Gravecrawler from my graveyard. I take a lot. I take 12, 13, 14. Wait. What do they... Wait, 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 wait. Was I dead? 8, 9, 10, 11. No. They can, what? They continued the whole match? What is with people and just rage quitting in this cube? That's the second time it's happened. And I don't get it. I just want to play games. All right. Well, sorry, viewers. We'll see you guys round three. All right. We are here for round three against Backbreaker. Let's go first. Oh, yeah. Turn one Thoughtseize. Turn two Priest. I have yet to cast Grey Merchant. He was going to do real good work last game, but alas, he did not. See what you got going on over there. Okay. Charming Prince, what is this? Creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. I don't care about that. Oust is actually kind of problematic. Because I'm just going to play turn two priest. Yeah, I think I just take Oust. It's their only form of interaction here. It's also their most mana efficient play. Because I don't really want to draw a priest later on. Like, this hand is good, but it needs a little bit more to get going. So let's open their hand, get rid of the planes. Uh, land? Not the best thing, but if I draw something like a Gutter Bones or one of those one-drop creatures, I can just recast easily. 
Um, then I can evoke Shriek Maw and kill something, and then... Okay, they play Imposing Sovereign, makes sense. Um, I can kill both creatures, basically, if I draw one of those dorks. Ooh, Plague Engineer naming Human. That seems even better than what I was asking for. So they play the land... Human. Get rid of Imposing Sovereign. Hit them for one. Plague Engineer is good. I'm glad I picked him up. So they're just going to have a 1-1 one, one Charming Prince. Oh, fair enough. It was a good draw. So they played another plane. So they have Charming Prince, Swamp, and two Unknown. Draw a spell. Rankle. Did they say something? Oh, no. All right, more lands. Not the best, but I guess next turn I can just hard cast Shriek Maw. Kill their Charming Prince or whatever they do. Opponent stopped on their upkeep. Is Terminus in this? Because... Oh, no, that would be in their draw step, not their upkeep. Okay, Wrinkle. Okay, so I don't know anything about their hand anymore. Show game log, see how they scry. Two cards on bottom. That's good for me. Ooh, a Danto Vanguard. So I can kill that with Priest. If I can uh, get rid of the rest of their creatures. Scrap Heap Scrounger. Hmm. Is it worth killing their Adanto Vanguard? To n Basically, I don't get Shriek Maw. But I can just play Shriek Maw. I guess that's fine, right? I'm just going to play Scrap Heap. Evoke Shriek Maw. So I want to keep this around. So evoke triggers after I kill the creature. So Charming Prince dies. Now I activate Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Sacrifice two other creatures. Any number of target players? Yeah, okay. You can target yourself, that's interesting. Sacrifice you two. I get Black Man, I also draw a card. They lose their Adanto Vanguard. I draw Gurmag Angler. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not enough, so let's just put you into play. Look at that. Perfect turn. Ooh, that's a problem. Oh, it's not that bad. That's good. In fact, some might say that is quite good. I'm going to offer the trade of Scrap Heap. Losing that card isn't the worst. I can make them discard the last card in their hand, but I kind of want both the cards, so... I think I'm just going to make both players draw a card. Because I want to hit a one-drop creature. Or a land. Land's not that bad. Last turn. They get another knight. They get a blade splicer. I get to... Probably just going to play a Gurmag Angler here. Go for the throat's also good. So... I have right now 7 total mana. If I just cast Gurmag Angler. I can rummage with Rankle if I really need to. Like... Let's discard Dendra, isn't it? Yeah. And this is going to become a 4 power thing. Let's attack with Rankle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So they're going to lose 5. So they're about to take 4. Yeah, we're just going to draw cards. Ooh, that's quite good. So now I can play Carrion Feeder. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So they're actually just dead. Um, I can activate Priest here, sacrificing both of these. Okay. That was sweet. The lines in this deck are really fun. Uh, so they have a lot of tokens, so I don't think I like the smallpox, braids. I do like Playcrafter, but the creep the cards that like repeatedly do it, I don't know if I necessarily love, on the draw at least. Um, here I'm more interested in Wretched Confluence for killing a ton of tokens, and uh, Riding Reggie can block, which is fine. The Eldest Reborn is very good though, and this card just getting back two creatures is... Oh, let's just bring in Order of Midnight, having a flyer. I could bring in Phyrexian Reclamation, but I think we're fine. We just want to be mostly aggressive. Yeah, that seems fine. There is an option to put in Massacre Girl if I feel like their deck is too out there. Uh, this hand's a little bit slow, but at least we have Thoughtseize to slow them down. And again, we're full of two drops. So we have two, two draw steps to hit one, and they mulliganed. Ooh, that's a pretty good two drop. I don't think I've seen that card yet. It's so good. Right, Swords to Plowshares, Scrap Heap Scrounger, Charming Prince, a Danto Vanguard. I'm tempted to take their swords because that deals with like... Yeah, I'm just going to take swords. They have a lot of two mana creatures, which I don't care that much about if I can just block them. That's a good mulligan though. Let me get down Vanguard. That's what we kind of expect. We're going to play Smuggler's Copter. Really need to draw a creature next turn. If I don't get in a hit with the Smuggler's Copter... And I can't start like filling up my graveyard for Gurmag Angler, that's gonna become problematic. Because I need to block this Adanto Vanguard. Opponent draws a land, so they can scry two. They draw Oblivion Ring too? Okay, that's a good two draws. 
spell. Fine. Would have been better, but at least I can do something with Rankle. If they well, they're gonna play a creature here. We need them to not. Ugh, and they hit the land for a double spell. Okay, those were good draws. Good draws. Um, we get to play Rankle. The problem is Rankle's really bad against Scrap Heap Scrounger. How did they scry? Two cards on bottom is good for me. I can't block. Take a lot of damage. Go for the throat is good, but I think getting on Rankle makes more sense. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I don't, I don't love this. Um, we're definitely gonna make each player sacrifice a creature because I need to block. So they lose their scrap heap. If they hit a black source, that's very bad. I'm um, just deciding if I can afford to draw a card. I think the answer is no. So that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can play Gurmag Angler next turn. Interesting. They, I guess they just kept the creature that does more damage. So these are gone. I don't know their hand. They drew a four drop. Oh gosh. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, that's not the worst thing because I can at least block with Rankle. Um, I do have to lose my Scrap Heap Scrounger here, but that's okay. No attacks. All right, please stop drawing just straight gas opponent. That card is fine. They can't attack. I'm just drawing lands. Uh, see, the problem is they're hellbent, so Rankle is like not that good. All right, keep playing lands. Go. Problem is I'm like one Oblivion Ring away from just straight up dying. Because if they remove my Gurmag Angler, I have no defense on the ground. But, okay, they drew a land. That's probably good. I'm saving Go for the Throat for like an attack with Rankle if they triple block with Spirits. Ooh, that's good. That holds down the ground too. So I think I can just Necrotal. Uh, the Precinct Captain? I'm trying to decide. The 2-2 two -two First Strike... Versus just all of the spirits. The spirits are problematic. I think I'm gonna kill the spirit. And then I'm okay trading. I guess there's no point in making them discard. So I'm okay trading three for two here. I don't really wanna let them draw. So I'll just have go for the throat plus Necrotal. Because they hit me to 10, I hit them to eight. They hit me to 8, I hit them to 5. They hit me to 6, I hit them to 2, and then they die. In fact, I can I can draw cards with Wrangle if I want to accelerate that too. But I wanted to wait until a turn where I had mana available, because if I draw like Grey Merchant there, and I can't cast it, and then they play something that wipes the board, that would be pretty rough. Kithian, I don't care too much about, although his ultimate will be problematic. They hit me for 2. Yeah, I don't know about this race. Better Bones. What does Kithian do? Uh, he can make a creature attack him. He can give a creature indestructible. Okay, so let's attack. Uh, do I want to attack? Because if they want to flip Kithian, they have to swing with him and three creatures, and then they would have to give him indestructible. So this only goes poorly if they draw a land. I think I'm okay with that risk, right? I attack. Mm, if I don't attack, yeah, I'll attack. I need to be pressuring them in the air. Still no draws, because I can't let them draw a land. Oh, I should have um discarded gutter bones or sacrificed gutter bones. Yeah, actually that was a mistake. Cuz I could have just got him back and recast it. Yeah, that was bad. I was supposed to play gutter bones, sacrifice it so they're down one creature. How did they draw oust? Oh, that was a different game? Is that a different game? I guess it must have been, huh? Well, that's very bad. All right. We got that. Ooh, this is going to go so well for me. Block Kithian. Go for the throat Kithian. Yeah, they should have been down one creature. Unfortunate. Didn't want to draw a land there. So, oh, I can attack with Wrinkle, put him down to five. What, is, what does it look like if I attack with these two? They can hit me for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And attacking with Gutter Bones makes no sense. Because they just block with Precinct Captain. If I hold back Wrinkle, their attacks don't look very good. Mm. Let me think about this. If I hold back Wrinkle, they can attack with Scrap Heap. Basically nothing. All right, I think I'm just waiting until I redraw Gurmag Angler, which will be, Oust puts it second from the top, so I just drew. So if I activate Rankle, then I'm good. Oh, or just draw him naturally, okay. Let's play Gurmy Boy and attack with Rankle. 
Trigger on the stack. Each player discards a card. I could make myself sacrifice gutter bones because he's like terrible on defense. And every creature they sacrifice is pretty relevant. Yeah, I'm okay with that. One goes down to five, and they lose their scrap heap scrounger. Blade splicer is fine. It does not help them in the air, though. I think we might do this. Got a swamp, but it doesn't matter. We attack with rankle. They're essentially forced to chump lock here. Gutter bones I can only get back if an opponent lost life. Last turn, so they don't know it's in my hand. A removal spell for Gurmag hurts, but they they only drew. Five lands in the top 23 cards, or 17 cards, so they're likely to start drawing lands here. Gravecrawler is huge. Uh, actually, it's not that good, but it's fine. <laughs> Let's play Gravecrawler. Attack with Rankle. Um, can I attack with Gurmag Angler? One, two, three. No, they just first strike him down. One, it blocks there. So they're down and out of flyers. Looks like they're just drawing lands and keeping them in hand. Oh, that's a good draw. That's so problematic. <laughs> All right. Plague Engineer. Plague Crafter. Um, we'll do that post-combat, I guess. We'll just slowly whittle them down. Back with Rankle. Play Plague Crafter. Sacrifice Gravecrawler. Because if I draw a zombie... Oh, I have a zombie. Okay, that's good. Back you. Play you. But now opponent needs to draw a Swamp. Which they're actually kind of likely to do, but they can only... What is this? Uh, that helps. That's a lot of 3-3 first strike golems. Ooh, that'll do it. Play Priest. Attack with Rankle. They chomp, so they need to draw Black Source this turn, otherwise they lose. And they don't know what card I have in hand. It's a Swamp, and they can probably guess that, but they can't guarantee it. If they right-click attack all, it probably means they don't have anything. Yeah, that's a lot of golems. Okay, so that's not enough. Um, I can block here. And I can chump block with a play crafter, but I'm only taking six. I think I would rather just have a strong backswing. <laughs> not what you want. Um, so if they have a kill spell for rankle, I think I'm just supposed to swing out. Right, they can block three, so they block here, here, and here. They take two uh actually if they have a kill spell for rankle right let's say i'm gonna have to sacrifice them anyway so i think this is fine they can first strike down my gurmag angler if they really need to all right so we're gonna sacrifice stuff they lose sacrifice the necrotol and the plague crafter what do they have what is this much mana okay i draw a card um Target player draws a card and loses one life. Yes. All right. <laughs> Five mana. Wretched confluence. Um, kill them. <laughs> I knew that card was good. I could have killed all their golems too by giving them all minus two, minus two, but that type of victory is way too sweet to pass up. Man, that was fun. That deck was awesome. I don't think I ever got to cast Grey Merchant or Whip, which is upsetting. But all the rest of the cool things that were going on there were a lot of fun. I'm just sad that somehow I lost round one. This was definitely a trophy-worthy deck, but it happens. See you guys next time.